Monster Hunter Stories is such an odd game. You know, to be honest, I was really skeptical when I first heard of it. I mean, it's a Monster Hunter game that chops up all the staples of the series, the combat, the gameplay, the cooperation, and it resembles something that's a little bit more akin to Pokemon. It's a turn-based RPG. Like, what? Where did this come from? But I'm pleased to say that this is one of the most enjoyable games that I've played in a long time. This is a wonderful treat to fans who may want to take a break from mega push and flexing and nailing iframes, and it's also just a generally good RPG. Yeah, it's turn-based, yeah, it's a little bit more on the kid-friendly side of things, but that doesn't mean it's not a great way to spend the 60 plus hours going through the story, capturing every monster, battling people online, and crafting the perfect team. Let's dig a bit more into it, shall we? So first things first, let's talk about the story. Normally Monster Hunter games don't really have that much of a cohesive narrative, but that's not really the case here. You play as a hunter in a village of riders, these people who ride and live alongside monsters rather than hunting and carving them. It's very much a sort of coming of age story. You and your friends are out in the woods looking for an egg so that you could hatch it. Of course, you just happen to stumble across an egg and of course your player manages to hatch it by dancing around with rocks. And lastly, of course, the monster inside is an adorable little Rathalos who immediately bonds to you and your player and is essentially a large fire breathing snuggle cat. So you have this baby Rathalos, everything is good for the moment until an evil Nargakuga attacks your village so it sort of evolves into this mystery as to why these monsters, like the Nar Nargakuga from before, are going mad and lashing out at humans. Of course, there's much, much more to this, but that's kind of the gist of how it starts. Now, one of the things I love most about Monster Hunter Stories is the world that it takes place in. I don't know if this is really considered canon since it's a spin-off title, but the world building in this game is just fantastic. Throughout your travels, you go through all sorts of these exotic locales. There's icy tundras with hidden hot springs. There's labyrinthian jungles where monsters can pop out of nowhere and surprise you. There's an exotic island that has probably the best architecture that I've ever seen in a game or in real life. The variety of environments is just really huge. And the towns. The towns are filled to the brim with NPCs and side quests. Sometimes the side quests will give you awesome rewards like recipes on how to make potions or specific armors and equipment. I'm not saying that the story is crazy engaging, but it is passable in my opinion for the most part. I never quite knew what was going to happen next, and I never really knew what monsters I would end up fighting, or if I was about to stumble into a town or what. However, there is one thing that I'd like to point out. Now, I'm very grateful that Nintendo, you know, put their foot out and they, uh, they publish this game internationally, but this is probably one of the worst translations that I have ever seen in a video game. The dialogue here is downright embarrassing. There were times where I just felt like telling Navi, your feline partner, to shut up and stop with the cat puns. It's like the translation team went out of the way to put every conceivable cat pun in every single sentence. And they also made sure to implement every single cat pun at least 30 times, 30 times minimum. But it's not even just the cat puns. Like uh, some NPCs, like Instructor Dan, he's an NPC in the starting town. The first time he says awesome in all caps and three exclamation points, it's like, oh, okay, well, I guess he's just really excited. And then he proceeds to say it four more times within the span of five minutes. It's like, all right, Dan, listen, I know you're hype, but you need the chill. Don't get me wrong, I like puns and Monster Hunter, but it seems like they just quickly overstay their welcome in the stories. And it seems, I don't know, it just seems kind of desperate, honestly. Thankfully, the gameplay translates into the turn-based format rather well. The game starts off rather simple. Your hunter and one of your monsters square off against an opposing team. You can switch between the monsters in your party, tell them to use special attacks, and even have your hunter attack your opponents. Basic moves can be one of three types, power, speed, and tech. This sort of works like rock, paper, scissors in a way, and whichever monster wins, they'll do additional damage while receiving less. It's simple, but it really starts to get tough later on because the monsters have all sorts of different tricks and patterns that you have to recognize. For example, my nemesis here, Pink Rathian, here, I thought I could win against her because she can't phase through time and space to hit me with her stupid tailspin, but here she'll just counter you whenever you attack her with speed. But she's not the only difficult monster. As of this video, I still haven't killed Rajang, and to be honest, I don't think I ever will. I'm just avoiding him at all costs. So you may be wondering how on earth exactly you get these monsters to follow you around and join your party. Well, since you're a rider, you have a natural knack for sneaking into monster nests and stealing the eggs out of the nests. You can then hatch the egg back in town and add it to your team. Depending on the nest you go into, the egg is usually random, but there are ways to guarantee it will be a certain monster. 
I actually like the system a lot because it requires a lot more effort to find the monster you want, so it's really satisfying to pick up a good egg and hatch it. I still think it's funny that you have to go through these random nests and take the eggs out. I could just imagine some really intimidating monster couple, like a Nazor Rathalos and a Pink Raytheon, coming back to their nest, all excited to, you know, hatch their eggs, and then they find out that their nest is empty. And here their baby is, in my party, slaughtering dozens of their fellow monsties. Things get a little more complicated when you unlock the channeling ritual and learn a bit more about each monster's gene board. Each monster has a gene board, or a bingo board basically. By using the ally ritual, you can sacrifice duplicate or unwanted monsters and slot their abilities into other monsters, making them stronger. Depending on the qualities of the gene and how your gene board is set up, you can really amplify your monster's stats and abilities. I'd even say it's essential to finish the game. You can even give monsters other elemental powers, which changes their appearance slightly. For example, you can get a red-tinted Lagombi that knows Fireball. One aspect that I really enjoyed, and this kind of surprised me, was the post-game content. There is a lot of stuff to do after the credits roll. After finishing the story, you'll unlock high rank monsters, and subsequently there are two major challenges that you can take part in. The first one is fairly simple. It's a maze that has a random assortment of monsters in it, although it's not really a maze, I'd say it's more just a series of corridors, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> but the other one that I really like is a 50 floor challenge with increasingly difficult monsters in this tower. This is tough as nails, at least it is for me, and it adds a lot of time to the game, and it also acts as a great way to level up and gather materials. Speaking of materials, you can still craft your armor and weapons for monster parts just like any other game in this franchise. There are four types of weapons, there's sword and shield, greatsword, hunting horn, and hammer, but each type of weapon has exclusive attacks that you can learn as you go through the hundreds of side quests available. I just want to reiterate, this game has a majority of the bells and whistles from the mainline Monster Hunter games. If you like Monster Hunter, you're probably going to like this game. If you like RPGs and team building, you're probably going to like this game as well. If you're looking for a deep, complicated stories about how other dragons used to rule the world until humans showed up, well, you're probably better off reading the Monster Hunter wiki. The graphics here look really good on a new 3DS. Unfortunately, I played on an old 3DS XL, and the entire experience was filled with awful slowdown, choppiness, and extreme texture popping. The NPCs and villages actually appear as textureless gray voids until you get close enough. As I said, it's not as bad on a new 3DS hardware, it's not as noticeable, but it's really pushing the limits of the system no matter what. But the music, man, the music in this game is astounding. Some of the battle tracks are really well done and fit the mood perfectly. Sometimes it just fits, you know? It's like the music is telling me that I'm definitely going to kick this monster's ass, and nothing can ever stop me. One thing that I didn't quite touch on is the online multiplayer, and that's because it's just not really my cup of tea. Although from what I hear and what everybody's been saying, I hear that it's decent. I hear that there are certain monsters that are overused and kind of overpowered, but I guess there are tournament playstyles and rule lists that you can enable, making sure that you can only use certain monsters to battle. Thanks for watching everyone. Monster Hunter Stories is all in all a great spin-off title in the Monster Hunter franchise. It's a great turn-based RPG, it's a great monster catching RPG to boot. It's not perfect by any means, but I really had a great time in the 100 plus hours that I put into it through two full playthroughs. If you enjoyed this review, please consider hitting that subscribe button, leaving a comment about what you thought down below. Or you may want to consider watching some of the videos that I have up on screen right now. Alright guys, thanks again for watching, have a good one. Peace.